Hello, and welcome back to Recitation. The problem I'd like to work with you today is uh, the intersection of two parametrized lines. So we have two lines here, L1, given uh, with the parameterization in terms of the variable t, and L2, uh, also given it with the parameterization in terms of the variable t. So the first question that I want us to ask is, do these, uh, to answer is, do these lines intersect? And uh, if so, uh, then we want to find out where do they intersect. So why don't you pause the video and work on this, and uh, we can check back in a moment, and we'll see how I solved it. OK, welcome back. Let's get started. So, um, we, so we have these two lines in space. Uh, before we start uh, doing any computations, I find it useful to draw a picture. So let's, let's see what's going on. OK, so I mean, we have these two lines. We can just find some, uh, some common points on the lines. So, uh, so well, if we put in t equals 0 here, then it looks like we get the point 2 comma 1. OK, and now uh, if we plug in, let's say t is uh, minus 1 here, then we get uh, if we plug in t equals minus 1, we get uh, x is 3 and y is 0. So there's our line, L1. And now let's see, L2, if we plug in uh, t equals 0, we get 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we plug in, let's say, t equals minus 1 again, then we get, um, so we get 1 and 2. OK, so there's L2. And indeed, uh, it does look like they intersect. Uh, we could have probably guessed that they intersect by looking back over here at the formulas for L1 and L2 uh, because we see that the sort of direction that this is moving in, we can take derivatives in, in t. And we see that the L, L2 is, this line is moving in the direction 1 comma 2. And uh, L1 is moving in the direction minus 1 comma 1. And so those directions are not parallel. And so we know that the only way the two lines could fail to intersect is if they're parallel. So actually, even without drawing this, we could have guessed that these lines do intersect. So, so now we know that these lines intersect. And in fact, it even looks, you know, it kind of looks like they intersect from our sketch at, uh, at the point, it looks like 1, 2. Seems to be the point of intersection. Um, but you know, we got, we got a little bit lucky with our, with our sketch here. So let's see if that's actually true. Let's see if we can verify this in the, in the general way that we discussed in lecture. So now there's one place where we have to be careful. We have two lines here. And, uh, and we parameterize both of these with the variable t. But we need to keep in mind that t is, is, is what's called a dummy variable. It doesn't, it doesn't have any geometric meaning to the problem. And uh, in particular, what, what I want to caution you about is if we, if we just start solving these two equations algebraically as, as they're given to us uh, with, uh, with the variable t, the problem that we could run into is that you know, we're sort of moving, as we vary t, we're moving along this line. And as we vary t again, we're moving along this line. And you see, we're moving at the same time. And, uh, and so that's really solving a different problem. That's not asking about when do these lines intersect, but that would be asking about when do two particles on these lines collide, which is a, which is a harder problem. So instead, uh, what we need to do is we need to give a change of variables for the, for the line L2. So what I want to do is I'm going to write L2. Uh, I'm just going to write the same equations, but I'm going to introduce a new variable u. So x is 2 plus u, and y is 4 plus 2 u. OK, so now once we've done that, to find the point of intersection, well, the point of intersection 
is going to precisely be a point on L2 where the x coordinate and the y coordinate agree with another uh, point on L1 with the same x and y coordinate. So that is, we have the, uh, what we want to do is we want to set the uh, x coordinate for L2. We want to set this equal to the x coordinate for L1, which is 2 minus t. So this, is, this was for L1. And similarly here, we want to set the y coordinate for L2 equal to the y coordinate for L1. So now if you think about it, if we can solve this system of equations, then what we've done is we've simultaneously found a point which is on L1 uh, and on L2. And that's, and that's our goal. So that'll be a point of intersection. OK, so now we just have these, uh, this system of two linear equations and two variables, and we just need to solve it. Now we could do uh, you know, the, in general, with an equation like this, we might try to add or subtract the equations. But this one is so simple that I see that the top equation is just the same thing as t equaling to minus u. That's what the top equation says if we cancel the twos. And so uh, if we plug that into the next equation, then we get 4 plus 2u equals 1 minus u. And so then we can solve this. And we get, so it looks like 3 equals minus 3u, which tells us that uh, u equals minus 1. And then that tells us that t equals plus 1. OK. So we found our parameters t and u. And we're not quite done yet. What we need to do is we need to uh, go back to our uh, parameterization. So let me go back over to uh, our original parameterization here. And we have um, L1 was 2 minus t and 1 plus t. And over here, we found that t equals 1 was the value that we're after. So that tells us that x is uh, 1, 2 minus 1, and y is 2. OK? So excuse me, x is, I wrote that in a funny way. x is 1, and y is 2. Now just as a reality check, we also found that uh, we also found that uh, if we solved for L2, we wanted the variable u to be equal to minus 1. So if we, uh, so, so uh, we had 2 plus u and 4 plus 2u. And so let's see what happens when we plug in u equals minus 1 here. Uh, we again get x equals 2 plus minus 1 is 1 and y equals 4 plus minus 2 is 2. So we just double check that, that this is a point of intersection of both lines. And I'll leave it at that.